In this lesson, we shall be looking at the glucosase phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency test, shortened as the GCSPD test. In fact, this is a common laboratory investigation that is usually ordered for pregnant women who usually come for their antenatal care in order for the midwife to take a decision whether the pregnant woman will be placed on the anti-malaria drug which tends to contain sulfur as which serves as an oxidant whether to take a decision to place the pregnant woman on the sulfadoxin paramitamine or not. Now, let's quickly look at the genetics of the GCSPD enzyme. So, the GCSPD enzyme is actually born on the X chromosome and inherited in a recessive pattern. In other words, the GCSPD is an X-link recessive genetic disorder. Being recessive, being a recessive genetic disorder implies that for the disease to occur, then both copies of the genes in both chromosomes must be abnormal, I mean must be affected in order for the disease to occur. So when both chromosomes genes are abnormal, then the individual was said to have the GCSPD disease. On the other hand, when one of the copies of the genes on both chromosomes are abnormal, then the individual is said to be a carrier. So that is what simply it means by being a recessive genetic disorder. Now supposing that it was not recessive but it was a dominant inheritance. Dominance inheritance means that we do not need two copies of the abnormal genes in order for the disease to be expressed. But only one copy of the abnormal gene in case of dominance inheritance, only one copy of the abnormal gene is required in order for the disease to occur. But in this case, we are dealing with recessive inheritance. And once it is recessive for the disease to manifest itself, two of the copies of the genes in both chromosomes must be affected or must be abnormal in order for the disease to occur. However, if one of these two copies of genes on both chromosomes, only one is abnormal, then the individual is said to be a carrier. Now, this particular disease, I mean enzymopathy, so the GCSPD is an enzyme, and so it becomes an enzymopathy. Party means disease. So enzymopathy means an enzymatic disease. So this particular enzymopathy or disease or defect is actually common among individuals whose ancestry is actually from Africa. So the GCSP disease is actually common in Africa as compared to other continent. Now, in, if an individual is having the GCSPD disease or this particular enzymopathy, what actually happens is that when these individuals, their cells are subjected to certain drugs or substances or free radicals which are classified as oxidants, what happens is that these oxidant drugs causes oxidation of cellular components, including proteins and lipids, to undergo oxidation. Oxidation is one of the ways or the means by which cells undergo injury or damage. In cellular adaptation, you will learn that 
the mechanism of cell injury occurs when the cells are being exposed to oxidants or free radicals. So when cells are generally exposed to oxidants, the oxidant is actually a species that causes other substances to undergo oxidation. So when the cells of an individual who is deficient of the GCSPD enzyme is being exposed to oxygen drugs or free radicals that exhibit oxidative stress, the end result is that proteins and lipids that are found in the cells will begin to undergo oxidation. And the oxidation is a damaging effect. And so in the case of blood cells, this oxidation will result in the breakdown of our blood cells. And that is called hemolysis. The word parts, hem means blood, and lysis means breakdown. Therefore, hemolysis is the breakdown of our blood cells. And some of these common oxidant drugs that can cause the cells of individuals that are lacking or that are deficient of the GCSPD enzyme to undergo oxidation include the salicylase, sulfonamides, primaquine, sulfur drugs, and many other antibiotics may also do contain oxidants that can trigger the breakdown of the individual results. Now, let's look at the genetics of the GCSPD into detail. So, we are looking at how the GCSPD as an enzyme is inherited. I mean, the mode of what? Inheritance. That is the genetics. Recall that we said the GCSPD is an X-link recessive genetic disorder. In other words, the GCSPD enzyme is born on the X chromosome. Is born on the X chromosome. So let's illustrate this genetics. Being born on the X chromosome, what it implies is that in the case of male subjects who have X and Y chromosome, and the enzyme can only be born on the S chromosome and not the Y chromosome. What this means is that male subjects who inherit this abnormal gene will automatically have the disease. There is no carrier in the case of male subject because the Y chromosome does not carry the GCSPD gene. It is only the X chromosome that carries the GCSPD gene. Hence, if the, X, the only X chromosome that a male subject possesses is affected, then the individual is said to have the disease. So that is a full defect in the case of male subject because the Y chromosome does not have a corresponding GCSPD gene to suppress or to max the effect of the deficiency in the X chromosome. So males are never carriers, but they are having the disease. They only will have the disease or they are normal for the GCSPD1 enzyme. So in the case of female subjects, so let's look at female subject. We know that females have two X chromosomes. Having two X chromosomes implies that both of these X chromosomes can carry the abnormal gene. That is, can become affected. So when both X chromosomes are abnormal, that is, is the same for both, then that is homozygous. Homo means the same. So homozygous abnormal. So when we have homozygous abnormal, in the case of female subject, 
the, that particular female individual is said to have the GSSPD disease. So, however, if, however, if one of these two X chromosomes, the gene is affected, then this particular female individual is said to be a carrier. That is a heterozygote. Now, notice that I have used red letter X and black letter X. Now, in this particular case, the red letter X is used to symbolize the absence of the GCSPD enzyme, whilst the black letter X is used to symbolize the presence of the GCSPD enzyme. So this is homozygous abnormal, and that is the disease. And this is heterozygous, that is one being normal and one abnormal. So this is a carrier female. And so that is a brief genetics with respect to the female subject. Let's quickly look at some case scenarios. So case scenarios, how the, the, the abnormality is being inherited. So this is case one. In this particular case, we are having a disease meal, a disease meal that is the X chromosome, the only X chromosome is affected, who is married to an unaffected female, that is both X chromosomes are normal. So this is the illustration. So this side is the male. And this direction is the female. So males have X and Y chromosome. Females have X, X chromosome. And so we are going to do the crossing or the matching. So this X, which is the abnormal chromosome, or the chromosome carrying the abnormal gene, when it matches with this X, will form red X, black X. This is a carrier female. And this is... This X matches with this X, we get a carrier female. Then this Y combined with this X, we get an XY. This is a normal male. This Y combined with this X, we get XY. This is also a normal male. Notice that there are only four possibilities or four outcomes. That is one, two, three, four. Now we want to express these outcomes in terms of percentages. In expressing them in terms of percentages, it means that these four possible outcomes is equivalent to 100%. So if these four cells is equal to 100%, and I want to know what each, in each box represent percentage-wise, percentage then it's going to be 100 divided by 4. And that will imply that each box is 25%. Now, if this particular outcome is a carrier, and this outcome is also a carrier, so it means that we have two carrier females, and each cell is 25%. So 25% carrier plus another 25% carrier will give me 50% carrier females. Now, notice that this particular male subject is normal, and this is also normal. So this is 50% normal males. 50% normal males. In case two, we have a normal male married to a carrier, I mean heterozygote female. So this is a normal male, XY, married to a carrier female. Only one of the X chromosome is affected. So when we do that crossing, this will give us a normal female, and this is a carrier female. So, and the Y matches with this X, we get XY. This will also give it the same XY. So we are going to have, for the female subjects, we are going to have 25% normal female 25% carrier female. So 25% normal female, 25% carrier female. 
Then in the case of a male subject, this will be a normal male, 25 percent, and this will be a disease male, that is 25 percent. Case three, this is a normal male that is married to a diseased female. So the male XY chromosome, diseased female XX chromosome. So these are the possible outcomes. So a diseased female means both X chromosomes are affected. And so we are going, this one match with this one, we get a carrier female. This will also give us another carrier, another carrier female. And this will give match with this one, we get a disease a disease male and this is also will get a disease what male now there are two carrier females and in totality that will give us a percentage of 50 percent carrier females but in the case of the males outcomes this is having the disease this also having the disease 25 25 will give us 50 percent disease males